I recently published a paper entitled A Matter of Measurement, How Different Ways of Measuring Racial Gaps in School Discipline Can Yield Drastically Different Conclusions About Racial Disparities in Discipline. This work appeared in Educational Researcher, which is one of the most prestigious and widely circulated journals in the field of education. For years, research has documented racial disparities in discipline. There's widely cited statistics that black students in particular are suspended out of school about three to four times as much as their white counterparts. These disparities have broad implications for students, contributing to what many people call the school to prison pipeline. Despite a wide body of research in this space, however, very little of the prior research has examined the metrics or measures used to measure and document racial disparities. My research looks at the specific metrics used to measure discipline disparities. It compares two of the most common types of metrics, as well as a few others that researchers and policymakers use to measure racial disparities in school discipline. The research shows that the choice of metric can have drastic implications for the substantive policy conclusions that are drawn about racial disparities. In other words, how we choose to measure the disparities matters for whether the disparities are say increasing or decreasing, or even for who we identify as the least or most equitable school districts in terms of racial disparity with school discipline. So this study uses data from the state of Maryland to examine specifically two measures, one called the risk ratio and the other called the risk difference. In a nutshell, the risk ratio compares the rate of discipline for black students to the rate of discipline for white students. And this would yield the common statistic that black students are three to four times as likely as white students to be suspended. In contrast, the risk difference looks at the percentage point difference in the suspension rates between black and white students. So for example, if you had a school district that suspended 15% of its black students and 5% of its white students, it would have a risk ratio of three, 15 divided by five, and a risk difference of 10 percentage points, 15 minus five. What I find in the paper is that the choice between using the risk difference or the risk ratio has broad implications for what we determine or the conclusions we have about racial disparities in discipline. So for example, in the state of Maryland between 2010 and 2015, the racial disparity in discipline as measured by the risk ratio was actually increasing. However, as measured by the risk difference, the racial disparity in discipline was actually decreasing. So in other words, the choice of metric determines whether over that five-year period, Maryland was seeing either an increase or a decrease in racial disparities in discipline. In a similar way, if we look within Maryland at which district had the largest or the smallest racial disparity in discipline, I find that the choice of metric also had huge implications for the conclusion drawn. Montgomery County Public Schools, as measured by one of these measures, was the least equitable district in the state. In other words, it had the largest racial discipline gap. However, if you use the other metric, Montgomery County Schools was the most equitable district in the state. It had the smallest racial disparity in discipline. So my research shows that the choice of metric has important implications, drastic implications even, for our decisions about whether racial disparities are increasing or decreasing, and whether particular districts have high or low racial disparities in discipline. When it comes to making decisions then about ways in which we can address racial disparities, the choice of metric is incredibly important. If we rely solely on a single metric, we may be drawing conclusions and then reacting in a way that may be missing part of the picture. So my work forces us or pushes us to think about the need for having multiple metrics to measure racial disparities in discipline so that we can make sure policy and practice decisions are best aligned to improving outcomes for students. Here's the takeaway. It's not that one metric is right or wrong, but that the idea of racial equity and discipline is multifaceted and it's not captured by a single metric. So the big takeaway of this research for policymakers, practitioners, and the broader public is that when we think about measuring disparities and examining disparities, we need to take a multi-pronged, multi-view approach. It's important not to rely on a single metric to define success or failure in addressing racial disparities in discipline. Instead, it's important to make sure we have multiple measures at play that are being considered from different angles so that we're able to react and implement policies and practices that can best serve our students and that take into account the full picture of what's happening with regard to race, discipline, and disparities within the school system.